So Victron's new 50 amp DC to DC charger is out. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid. In this episode, I'm just going to look at the specs and muse about the up and coming new Victron DC to DC charger. That's the 50 amp buck boost, as they call it. We don't actually have it in hand yet. We have ordered, it's probably about two weeks or so uh, that uh, we'll receive the delivery according to Victron. But we've been studying what it does and all the various specs and traits. And so let me take you through what's really interesting to us. So firstly, we're actually pretty excited about this because we've been waiting for it for quite some time. And there are a few reasons why we've really been looking forward to this. First, and probably the most important, is that it is a 50 amp charger or capable of up to 50 amp DC to DC charge. And that is very significant because a lot of modern motorhomes have an alternator that's at least 120 amp. A lot of them have a 160 amp alternator. So they have a lot of spare capacity in the alternator that is not being used. Secondly, a lot of people have converted their motorhomes to lithium if they haven't bought it uh, you know, with lithium in, in the deal. As we know, lithium can charge pretty fast. So with a lead acid, you really shouldn't charge 100 amp hour lead acid at more than about 10 to 20 amps. A, lithium, a 300 amp hour lithium can practically be charged at 300 amps, but most BMSs allow a charge rate of, uh, you know, at least between 100 to 200 amps. And so why not charge your batteries? Why not charge them at 90 amps or 100 amps or whatever? So the old 30 amp DC to DC that we put tons of these into motorhomes and, and van conversions, etc. These charge at 30 amps maximum. And that is quite a limit if you if you consider that you might have a 160 amp alternator, why only use 30 amps? So for us to be able to charge at 50 amps is really great. The only way we've been able to achieve that up to now is either by putting two of these in parallel or to uh, push customers towards another uh, DC to DC charger. And there's some really good ones like the Vitronics, etc. But it's gonna be really great having the Victron charger charge at 50 amps. So let me take you through some of the stuff that I, I really, really enjoy. So we printed this off the Victron site. So this is the uh, this is the smart buck boost DC to DC charger, non-isolated. And buck boost is the sort of generic term given to a DC to DC or a battery to battery or a B to B, whatever you want to call it. So they've actually incorporated that into the name, which I think is quite nice. It's sort of quite catchy to tell somebody you'll put a buck boost in your vehicle rather than a DC to DC that kind of sticks and doesn't get out of the mouth really easily. B to B is nice and smooth, but buck boost, hey, you know, who wouldn't want a buck boost in their vehicle? So this is a non-isolated, so meaning it's uh, very similar to this one, that it has three terminals. Running through, okay, the first blah, 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 about being built from the ground up or engineered from the ground up and uh, smart alternators, etc. That's that's all cool. But here we get to the adjustable charging current. So the, the charge current is adjustable with a minimum step size of a 0 0.1 amp via Victron Connect. So that's the app. So you Bluetooth to it and you tell it, hey, my alternator is not quite you know, big enough for all 50, so I only want to charge at 40 or whatever the case is. That's quite significant in that, in theory, we wouldn't need to, uh, you know, even for a caravan, you could drop it down to say 50 an amp to charge through that uh, plug or something like that. So quite nice that we can ad adjust the the charge current between one and 50 amps. That's For me, that's a huge plus. Smart alternator compatibility may have improved uh, over the 30 amp, but I mean, the 30 amp has had smart alternator compatibility anyway, so that's great. Adapter for charge algorithm, that's for lead acids. We're not interested in that for lithium. We, we put very few of these into motorhomes for lead acid, very few. The vast, vast majority are for lithium batteries, so we wouldn't worry about the four stage uh, charging uh, uh, algorithm. Here's quite important. The low temperature shutdown and input under voltage protection, mostly the low temperature shutdown. So for cases where you have a lithium battery that is not heated, it is possible to configure the DC to DC to not charge when the temperature is too low. So what I like about that is it's it's another layer of protection for the battery. So rather than in relying entirely on the BMS within the battery, you can rely on a second line of defense, that being the DC to DC charger or the buck boost charger. So quite handy. The remote on off, okay, these have the remote on off, this little 
uh, green connector here is for the remote and there are several ways that you can uh, use this. So uh, the buck boost clearly if you look here on this picture or here it does actually have the same thing so that's great that you can still uh, handle that in that particular way but what I do like about this is that you can run it with the Victron Connect app so you can connect it with your phone and turn this on and off. What I like about that is that if you have a problem that you can actually turn this thing off, get onto the app and actually turn it off fully. The 30 amp, which is this one, uh, you can't actually control on or off with, with your um, Vectron Connect app on your phone. You, you're relying entirely on whatever is configured on uh, this uh, remote plug here plus the voltage settings that you put into there with the app but you can't go into your phone and say turn the thing on turn it off uh, so even if you had a problem you can't actually go and turn this off quite like the, the fact that you can turn it off when you need to uh, comprehensive electronic protection yeah and it talks a lot about the temperature so if the temperature goes up it protects itself that's great can be parallel to increase output, so you can put two of them in parallel to uh, produce 100 amp if you wanted to. Great, that's a lot of charging. If you need to charge within an hour or so, that's great. You can actually do that. You can do it with the 30 amp as well, but that's good that you can do it with the 50 amp. Bluetooth smart enabled, so a wireless solution to monitor activities, and so it uses uh, Victron Connect, etc., and has instant readout. Uh, so that's pretty much the same as this really not might be better but it's pretty much all of that is there this is also something we've all been waiting for which is a v direct port so the buck boost will have the ability to connect directly to a gx one of the gx family and to have that uh, monitored so you can see how much is coming into the battery uh, via the DC to DC charger or the buck boost charger. What I like about that is that up to now you could only see what is coming into the battery because of the, the smart shunt or look at your BMS itself. But there, that is a case of subtracting you know, what could be used by the habitation electrics versus what, what is actually coming out of the DC to DC or the buck boost charger. So having this wired into your GX uh, is going to be a a good thing for actually monitoring to see what's happening. So the last item on this particular sheet is the IP65 protection. I quite like that because it just makes it a lot more versatile as to where you can install this device. So the, the 30 amp, the original 30 amp is IP43. So it's not that versatile. You have to keep this in quite a dry location. The new buck boost being IP65 will make it possible to install it in locations that could get a bit of splash or humidity or something like that. You know, perhaps even in your engine compartment, if there is nowhere else to install it, yes, with all the heat and everything else that comes with that, you could install it in the engine compartment. With a bit of splash and a bit of water coming in, it should be okay. So I quite like the fact that it is IP65. Right, if we move on to the uh, spec sheet now to just run through the items that really stand out to me. I mean, there's uh, a few odds and ends here that you can read through, but basically, we, right, firstly, we know it's a 50 amp or 700 watt. That's really great. The second thing that really stands out is the max efficiency is 98.5. That's a big question that everybody asks is, uh, will the buck boost have fans? Uh, loads of people, have, when we've spoken about it and, and when we've mentioned it, have said, oh, will it come with fans? Because the 30 amp gets pretty hot. When you're charging at 30 amps, this thing, if it's not got really good cooling, is actually just too hot to touch the fins. It gets that hot and it throttles down to protect the unit, just as the buck boost will do. But the efficiency of this thing obviously is not that good, the fact that it heats up quite a bit. You'll see they've made the buck boost quite a bit smaller, but according to them, it's 98-ish percent uh, efficiency, which will mean that the unit should heat up a lot less than the, than the buck boost will, uh, than the original uh, 30 amp. So quite like the 98% efficiency. The other things that really occur to me is the maximum cable cross section that can be attached according to Victron is a 25 millimeter squared cable which is AWG4 and the 30 amp uh, has got fairly small connectors these can only take a 16 mil cable whereas the uh, buck boost according to the spec sheet comes with a 25 mil 
connection, a screw-in connection. That's great. The other thing that I really am surprised about is the 0 0.330 kilogram or, or 0 0.73 pound weight because these are 1.7 kilograms. They are quite actually quite heavy for what they do and so to have something that's way less you know fraction of this in terms of weight is uh, quite something the fact that it's 50 amp and way lighter and way more efficient and configurable is just quite amazing to me i was thinking then that the buck boost is surely going to be a, a big animal if it's going to be going from 30 amp to 50 amp it's going to be a lot bigger with much bigger cooling fans but according again to the dimensions the height is 137 whereas this is uh, about well the depending on which you're calling the height and and the width so the width is 123 this is about 190 and the height, I suppose that's the height they're saying is one, 137. The DC to DC is 120. And the depth is 40, which is quite a lot less than this, which is 90. So the buck boost is a lot smaller than this, slightly taller. But it, overall, it's a lot smaller and a lot lighter and able to do a lot more. Finally, this is pretty much the same as the 30 amp that you've got three connectors that connect in the same way uh, with the remote which you'd handle in the same way connected with bluetooth this is absolutely brilliant this new one here which is being able to connect a v direct into the into the back boost see this doesn't have a v direct anyway so being able to connect the v direct and then connect directly into a computer or into your server gx or whatever for monitoring and that sort of stuff is really great so can't wait to get our hands on the actual unit just thought we'd uh, throw this out there preparation but we'll be getting the units as i said within the next two weeks and uh, we'll mount one onto a vehicle and actually run it through its paces and be back to you with the video actually showing it in use so really looking forward to that should be exciting and we have these on uh, the buck boost we have them on pre-order on our website so we'll include the link below so I suggest you can get hold of them as soon as possible and when they come in you can be one of the first to get one so i hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you in the next episode